as a uh, practical perspective based on the work that Penico is doing, our experience uh, in the horizontal um, conventional um, drilling, um, I just wanted to, you know, some questions were, were asked about, you know, how, how far you might be seeing some communi communication and things like that. When the price of gas uh, went down, uh, natural gas went down about three years ago, we started tinkering around with an idea, uh, and that was to drill horizontally in the conventional sandstones. And we were in a position, uh, we were positioned very nicely in some, some oil, old oil fields and decided to give it a try because oil seemed to be have a steadier, uh, steadier price. <coughs> and so we started drilling horizontally in the conventional sandstones and fracking them. And part of, because we didn't have too many people to go to to understand better how to do it, we just uh, started from scratch and began um, a, an area of study or research and to understand our impact as we frack these, these shallow horizontal oil wells. And uh, we began our area of, of uh, study of 2,000 foot uh, path through along the horizontal to identify the wells that uh, you know, were there. And then from there, we targeted a thousand feet out when we fracked the well. We targeted a thousand feet out to start to, to put gauges on all the wells that we located, whether they were our wells or another operator. We'd work in conjunction with the other operators. In some cases, putting putting chart recorders on the wells while throughout the duration of the frack. And what we've discovered after drilling thirty, <coughs> drilling and completing thir at least thirty somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, both in Plumborough and Allegheny County, and a few Westmoreland uh, County uh, townships and boroughs, and also down in Green <coughs> County. Uh, what we discovered is the, the area of influence is, um, is right at about 500 feet. We have, we have not um, seen any pressure increase on any wells outside of 500 feet. And the ones that we do see, it's a, it's a very small bump. <coughs> Generally what we did, not knowing what we were going to get into, is we would empty all the tanks on those wells that were on those sites along the lateral so that if we had to, if we saw a pressure increase and had to open a well up, we'd have room to, you know, to blow the well. And we've, we've just experienced a small, you know, just small bumps. And in a lot of cases, the operators that have been you know, the offset operators have actually been influenced positively and thanked us because we pushed product to them and they've had to start setting pump jacks again and that sort of thing. So uh, I, just, I just thought maybe our experience might help to give a little bit of perspective, food for thought for the board and for the department as far as, uh, you know, setting up these guidelines. Um, as far as the conventional offers, I, operators, I think that what we've discovered is that 500 feet is, is a good number. Uh, we haven't seen anything beyond that. Um, and also, you know, speaking as a, as a small independent, uh, we are certainly not for, for more uh, reporting. Uh, we don't want to see any kind of a a frack permit on top of the drilling permit, um, and which, which seems, you know, as, as information is gathered for, you know, uh, pre-frack, it seems like that's the direction it's going, that you're going to want more information before we can frack, uh, so we're certainly not uh, in favor of that. And then, and then lastly, uh, as far as helping the department uh, bolster their database, uh, my thought would be, Back in the, the 80s and 90s, there was kind of a climate, a consensus among uh, some independent, small independent operators, and it seemed, it seemed to be, um, you know, it seemed to just, the department really didn't enforce at that time um, completion reports being sent in and, 
you know, drilling and completion reports being sent in. And so there, there's probably a, a pretty, pretty sizable void there that could be, uh, that could be filled if the department would offer a period of grace to the, to the uh, operators to go back in their files and to, uh, to re... Because there, there's no incentive now to do that because there's a fine attached. So if you would raise, if you would give a period of grace raise, and, and erase the fine and say, look, if you guys will just... We're going to give you some time to send these things in so we can build our database, have a better understanding of the shallow wells in Pennsylvania, that that might be some kind of an incentive to get it done before uh, you know a fine could be administered. Great grace period for well records and in completion reports. Yes. Well, back then they were kind of yeah, one and the same. Mark, uh, how those wells? What's the time period would you suggest on that? Um, you mentioned something about being proprietary. <laughs> <laughs> What, what's the time period on the, would you say, is this for this grace period? Certainly it's not this year, right? From what period to what period? Um, that's, that's open for comment. You know, I, I, would, I, I would, I don't know what it would take for us to go through ours, um, you know, but we, we could probably, you know, three to six months or something like that. Now, was it 1985 to 1995? Where is it? Um, yeah. Probably. 